Hey guys, it's Phoenix, and this is part 2 of the Learn Command Block series. And in this episode, we'll be going over the test for and the test for blocks commands. And let's jump right into it. So, uh, to start off, it's probably best to build a redstone clock, and that's because these commands require a continuous uh, signal of redstone, and they need to be uh, activated continuously. So, let's just build a very quick redstone clock. Just like that. And you need a comparator to be placed adjacent to the command block. And that's because um, the command block actually tests for a certain player. And when it's successful, when it tests for that player, it will emit a redstone signal via a comparator. So in the command block, we type in the following command. It is test for uh, at P or you can use at A or at E, and we'll go over that later on. Uh, so it's test for at P, and let's just use a basic uh, specifier, and that's a radius specifier, so just use R equals three. And as you can see, uh, the comparator will turn on. And that's because uh, this command block has successfully found a player within a three block radius of this command block. and as you can see, I am within, within three blocks of this command block. And by default, this command block will search for a radius, uh, for a player within a radius of three from this command block. And you can actually alter this. And let's demonstrate that. So let's just get the coordinates of this block here. And that's 50, 50, 630. And we can put that into the command block like so. And now the command block will test for a player within a radius of 3 um, from this block right here. So it's no longer testing from this command block but this block over there. And as soon as I stand 3 blocks within here you can see the comparator has turned on just like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, there are other ways to customize this and you can also use the uh, game mode specifier and that is m equals so m equals 1 will look for a player whoops that's going to be coming here so this will look for a player th uh, three blocks within that redstone block I've placed before who is in game mode 1 and since I'm in game mode 1 it will still successfully find me but as soon as I change this to game mode uh, let's say 0 so that's survival mode, it will no longer find me. So if I go into survival mode and go over here, it will find me. But if I go into creative, it will no longer find me like that. Uh, there are other specifiers you can use. Um, you can use the level specifier, which is L, and um, count specifier, which is C. But we won't go into those because it's probably not as important. Um, you can also use NBT tags, so over here. And let's you can use um, let's see XP level. Uh, let's do five. So now this command block will test for any player within this coordinate here at a radius of three who is in survival mode and level five. So if I stand here and go into survival mode, it will find me because I'm level five, as you can see, and um, I'm also in survival mode. There's also another concept uh, for the test for command, and that is test for at E. And it works in a similar way for at P. Um, so we can use type exclamation mark player r equals 5. And what this is doing is testing for all entities that is not a player within a radius of 5 of the command block. So you should see that the comparator is turned off. And we can extend this strength as far as we want it to. Let's leave it there for now. And depending on how many entities this command block finds that is not a player, uh, the strength of the redstone signal that is emitted from this command block uh, will be dependent on the number of entities that it finds. So since item drops are entities, I'm just going to drop some items down. So as you can see, the strength of this redstone 
is now dependent on the number of items it can find on the ground. Uh, it should stop at one point, yeah. It'll still stop at 15. So this also works for mobs uh, as well as players as well. Uh, so if I summon some mobs here, let's just summon a bat with no AI. You can see that this comparator has turned on and I can summon as many as I want. And you'll see that the strength of the signal is also equivalent to the number of bats within the radius. So there's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, well, it's actually four because this is outside the five block radius. Um, so if I kill them now, you can see that the comparator will turn off because there are no more entities for this command block to find. Okay, so a very neat way to use the test for command, um, this is a very basic application, is by setting up this cool uh, set block and replace block um, setup. So this command block here will activate whenever there's a player who is five blocks with around this uh, command block. And as soon as it activates, this piston will extend and set a redstone block over there. And this one here will replace it to a stone as soon as you leave the radius. So basically what's happening is as soon as you enter this vicinity, uh, this redstone clock will be fired up and activate this dispenser continuously. So if I put some arrows in there, and someone enters the radius, it will, just Im it will immediately fire arrows. So it's a pretty cool application. It's a really basic application. I've already made a lot of videos using the test for command, and it's really, really useful. Uh, so that's really all there is for test for. Um, again, there are very, very uh, advanced setups that you can use, but I won't go into those uh, or into too much detail because uh, it's just this is just a tutorial. Okay, so the test for block command uh, acts in a very similar way to the test for command, although uh, it is a lot simpler to understand how to use this. So the correct syntax for the test for block command is test for block, and then the x, y, and z coordinate um, of which the block will be placed or will be detected, and we'll use fifty. Well, fifty. 51629. Uh, or oh, actually, we'll use 630. And that's because I've already uh, set up the marker block here. So the block should be placed over here. And actually, I'll use a command block just to show it. So right now, um, the test for block is simply testing for a certain block in this coordinate. Uh, so we'll use the word, we'll use the data ID for wool, which is just wool and we'll press enter. So right, right now what this command block is trying to do is detect that a red wall should be placed where this command block is. So the comparator isn't on because there is no wall there. It's a command block. Uh, so you should see the previous output. It will say test it for block at here is a command block and it's expecting a wall block but right now there is no wall block. So we'll just press done. Uh, and replace this with wool. And you can see the comparator has turned on. You can also add a data value over here to correspond to a certain color type of wool. Let's just use the number four. And the number four corresponds to yellow wool. Uh, but of course we have magenta wool here. So that's why the comparator has turned off. So as soon as we remove this and put yellow wool, so as you can see the yellow wool has a data value of four and place that here, the command block has turned on. So it's a very simple concept again. Um, won't go to, into too much detail. Again, you can also add uh, data values, uh, data tags, sorry, over here. Uh, but again, it's quite complicated to work with data, uh, data tags when it comes to blocks. It's a lot easier to deal with data tags when it comes to entities because you'll use them far more often. Um, so I won't go into too much detail. You can go on the Minecraft forums or the Minecraft wiki to look some of them up, um, but I won't go into them into too much detail in this video. Okay, so that's all I have for this video. If you enjoyed watching it or you got something out of it, uh, make sure to give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.